Philo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. And by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, don't forget, if you do want to watch episode, or if you missed a live and you want to catch up on previous lives, or be ready for future lives, we do have www.twitch.com put in the lit one as you see it right here i was trying to figure out what i was trying to say i forgot it see i'll be adding new stuff to the twitch and i, I just for be forgetting what i'll be anyway uh also we do got merch and we do got the patreon the link to all of this is down in the description below but make sure you're part of the twitch because if we ever get deleted or un or start being not seen somewhere i'm always be here you get me Anyway, this is Camp Pay Will Take It Away Season 14, I mean, Season 4, Episode 12. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. I like a lot. That little screen right there is lit. <laughs> Talk to me. Over the last six years, there's been a huge increase in cash flow difficulties faced by UK businesses. 100,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales last year. County court judgments worth £78 billion were issued against businesses in England and Wales in the first quarter of 2016. Damn, I can't read. Delroy Anglin and his son Dale are High Court enforcement agents. This will actually take a session, then. Yeah, yeah, new good combo right here. <laughs> They travel hundreds of miles each week, collecting debts and seizing goods. Okay, Dale, what have we got? We've got a company called Creative Printer. Couldn't find anything online about them. Found a website, but we can't find anything to confirm an address. Today, they're on their way to a printing company in East London to collect a debt of nearly £2,000 owed to a dissatisfied customer. It's... Yeah, look, Creative Printer in the house. If the owner of the company, Mohammed Rahman, can't or won't pay today, we'll take it the away. agents have the right to seize company assets to offset the debt. The opportunity is there every episode to say can't pay, we'll take it away, and they choose not to. Hello, looking for a creative printer. Hello, buddy. High call enforcement agent. Just need to speak to the boss, is he here? Cheers, mate. Right to the promise land. I don't want to stay in there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. See you, Mike. Yeah. Hello, right, you right. the boss? Yeah. How you doing? My name's Dale Anglin, my High Court Enforcement Agent. Okay. Uh, I've got a High Court writ against the Creative Printer. I'm here for the sum of £1,971.07. pence. Okay. Uh, are you able to make that payment, sir? Uh, we are talking about this one with, um, uh, with the court. What, are you disputing it? Yeah. Even though Mr. Rahman is disputing the case, the agents are duty-bound to enforce the writ here today. What's the dispute about, then? She printed a business card. Yeah. Yeah, she printed a business card. Yeah, this really is funny. a... This is what we printed. Yeah. As for the color, but she wanted this one. And we said, hang on, if you give us yellow color, you will get yellow color. If you give us like this color, you will get it like mm. this color. Mm. You know what I mean? Then she took us to the court. In spite of you his argument deal. with the claimant, Dell needs Mr. Rahman to understand that he must settle his debt today. What happens is the money when you pay it to us stays with us, right? Whilst you do this and you go to court and the judge is the referee. If the judge decides that you are in the, you're in the right, you will get the money back. If the judge decides that she's in the right, you will lose the money. But Mr. Rahman isn't interested. I dispute not to pay this. 
it's a small amount in relation to what you do, right? The easiest way would be to pay this amount. Cooperate, man. Oh, I just, you can't or won't. I can't pay that straightforward because we are in a process with this building, this one. Dell tries again to get Mr. Listen. Rahman to settle the debt. We don't get involved in disputes. We carry out the court's instructions. If you would rather this disruption, it doesn't make sense to me, yeah. but if you, if you don't want to pay it, we have to remove goods. Nothing is created previous. You'd have to prove that to me. What do you want me to prove? I don't, that nothing I don't is see created proof of who owns everything in here. Yeah, it's Creative Distribution UK Limited. After refusing to pay, Mr. Rahman claims that none of the assets in the factory are owned by Creative Printer, the company named on the writ, People be but by real Creative slick. Distribution Limited. But Dale is suspicious. What do they do? Creative Distribution UK Limited. Creative Distribution is the printing company and creativeprinter.co.uk is a website who sells stuff. You advertise your company as Creative Printer. Everywhere outside it says Creative Printer. It's the same thing. No. Not I'm telling you, you can battle it out in court when I remove goods from here. Creative I'm not going to battle it out. Talk about it. Is owned by Creative Printer. The agents need to see hard evidence that Mr. Rahman is telling the truth and that there are two this separate companies. Be on timing. He you need care. to produce every piece of paper, whatever it is you want to do. Like he like Brian. No, no, we're... His son moves like his old partner. His old partner is Brian. It's just a re replacement for Brian for him. I'll we'll, say uh, server. I will show you the server is belongs to. Well, we. Yeah. I'm not going to go through every. What about this one? What about this one? What about this one? We're just because take I need to see it for everything in here. So whose is the server? Yeah, I need to see you. I need to see the proof. Show me the receipt. Yeah, for everything. People often try to put off the scent when dealing with a business. We have to be dogged. We have to be diligent. We have to sort of dig in there. The change of names, a, a, a different company being set up. Part of our job is, is to investigate and have a look and see if you do have assets. I'm not going to sit here all day and wait for your receipts. This is one item. Welcome How to much you. items do you think we're going to take for this bill? And I'm not going to sit here all day and wait for it. The agents have now been at the factory for an hour and a half. And so far, Mr. Rahman has only provided one receipt for the assets on site. Yes. Go ahead, take it away. I can't show you. you can't show me. I can get it from the accountant office saying that all this property belongs to I don't want to start getting it. I want a receipt. Yeah. No worries, we need to shut these down, guys. We need to start unplugging all the computers. I've been here a long time and we've got nowhere. Dale decides to turn up the pressure. I'm closing them. I'm closing them. We're removing goods from here, so please don't do that. Right. I'm telling you we're taking stuff. No. We are. No. We're removing goods from here. I'm saying you cannot take it. I'm telling you we are taking it. Mr. Rahman decides to take action. You are playing with me. No, no, you are taking it. No, no, you are your You are asking me to show anything. And now you are just taking it. That's not Because right. you haven't supplied anything. Get your hands off me. This premise says it belongs to me. Get your to... hands off me. No, Get you, your you hands hold. off of me. You hold me. No, I ain't listening. I've had enough of you. We've been here for hours listening. If you are breaking it, it's going to be trouble. Let's get negative. Oh, move, right? Yeah, get it on video camera. Move. Yeah. Resisting the agents carrying out their duties is a criminal offence. Why are you stopping? It us? is. You're not giving me a chance, chance to take. Uh, you, we've given you a chance. We've no, been here for hours. That's not, that's You're not, not listening. Right. No. Let the police come and we just empty it. I've had enough of all this. All you've done is right, caused botheration and problems. Uh, please, please. With tempers well, rising, me. Dale calls for police backup. There's a high court enforcement agent I'm carrying out a high court writ at premises. Um, we started removing <laughs> goods, but they're obviously. Let me tell you something. No, let's get it all done. Let me tell you something, buddy. If you touch me one more time, you're going to jail. Instructing <laughs> us and trying to grab us Today. to stop us taking anything. I've seized it. Yeah, right? you can seize it. I can. I'm taking it. You cannot seize any other company. I can. You are resisting us, yeah. right? I'm, you are holding my stuff. It's not your stuff. We are taking it. No, you cannot take it. Move from there. No. With Mr. Rahman refusing to back down, Dale and Dell are in a potentially threatening situation. Will they be able to keep things under control until the police arrive? Dang, man, this be the whole thing, man. Police gonna come, they gonna be like they have the right to take it. <laughs> and then what you gonna do? This is a bad look for your business, man. 
High Court Enforcement Agents Dell and Dale Angley were in Canning Town, East London, to collect a debt of nearly £2,000 owed by a printing company to a dissatisfied Excuse customer. Me. I can't pay that. You can't or won't? Company director, Mr Rahman, claimed all the assets were owned by another business, Creative Distribution. Nothing is owned by Creative Printer. He refused to pay and tried to stop the agents when they tried. You know what's crazy, man? This guy, he's probably not lying. It is owned by a different company, but you're not showing receipts is the problem. Just show the receipts. Somebody in this time, I know you got a fax machine. Somebody could have faxed it to you. It's owned by Creative Printer. All of them. At he once. refused to pay and tried to stop the agents when they tried to seize goods. Why are you stopping us? You're not giving me a chance up. to take... Uh, you, we've proof. given you a chance. We've no, been here for hours. That's not, that's You're not, not right. listening. No. So they called for police backup. Uh, police, please. <laughs> now the agents must try and calm the situation down and continue to seize goods to offset the £2,000 debt. But Mr Rahman is still obstructing the agents. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? If you're doing like Why are you doing that? I was standing there, you, he pushed me. Yeah? No. I'm gonna jump in, are you? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I'm getting you off me. Let go of me. Let go of me, please. Thank you. Please stop grabbing me. Look, behave. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? He's making himself look very dumb. Why are you just trying to take pictures, play the victim role. There's a whole body camera running twenty, like the during the whole transaction. <laughs> well, what are you doing? He doesn't want him to take the. Computer. Well, we have to take it Why because he doesn't that? want to pay it, does he? Why it? are you doing? So that? It's not our problem. Mr. Rahman is still claiming the assets on site belong to a different company, Creative Distribution, and not Creative Printer, named on the writ. Why are you grabbing it? It says Creative Distribution. Okay, grabbing. look at that. It says Please. Creative Distribution. You just printed it and put it on there. That doesn't mean anything. We need the receipts. Okay, it's a nice sticker. Thank Have you, very you got the receipts? Just a, Thank we'll you have the stuff in here. Please. Why can't he behave? No. You shouldn't behave. Manhandling no. who? For what reason? Why would you manhandle me? It's my me? premises. I can stand here. Stand there. Yes. Stand there. Crack stand on. there okay. then. Okay. Stand you're there. welcome to stand there. Okay. It's my premises. Don't be pushing on us. Stand there. If you're going to stand there, stand there. Please. It doesn't make any sense what okay. you're doing. That's it. Make any sense? It's a stalemate, but then the police arrive. Here we go. Here we go, and this is where all the embarrassment sets in. All the pictures you took that mean nothing. All, all the, all the yelling. Let's do uh, all the, all of the uh, playing victim. Piece upstairs. When we started season items to remove, obviously there was. A big obstruction that's obviously grabbing us and trying to drag us away from the computers and stuff. It is a problem with another company, nothing to do with this company. The company they came in for, that's just a website. From the minute I got here, I said to you, I need the receipts. That's what I said to you from the minute I've got here. And you've shown me one. They what? cannot take someone else's stuff. No, but you have to prove to me whose stuff it I is. Did. They have a legal right to obtain properties from here, okay. whether you agree with it or not. And they need to do their job, don't they? They, they, Any they, they what? that you have needs to go to court, Mr. Ryman. Mr. Rahman is still adamant he won't pay. He then now he decides to film the police with his mobile phone. And you guys can't bring anything even though we call you. It's a trespass as well as they're taking wrong company to stop. Mr. Rahman, you're not listening, are you? Dell's patience is being stretched to the limit. He's threatened a breach of the peace. We are going to remove. And if he obstructs me again, you'll have to arrest him. That's all he's been doing all day. So you're going to remove another company's property? I'm going to remove that you haven't satisfied me as to who owns that. So I'm, I'm, I will. Don't start again. Don't look, start at start again. Look, 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 look at that. Look at that, Mr. Officer. Look at that, Mr. Stump. Look at that. They're going to take you away. They're going to take you away, mate. So they are taking another company. Even look. Yeah. Mr. Rahman, come in, please. Let's just give you a friendly word. If your behaviour continues, persist to prevent them from doing their job. Forced, have no choice to rest the and believe me, that's real pain when you think you're in the right, <laughs> but they don't tell you the law. Let's get negative, police. I will not pay a single penny, which is unfair. Okay, that's fine. Don't pay. 
But it just don't instruct when we get to taking it away. But that's your choice. We've gone through this with him. It's not unfair because he has the option to get the money back. Pay it, right? And we leave and you go to the judge with your argument and you have your argument. No, you said too much. Are you going to pay it or not? Right. Come and talk then. Let me talk to him. Suddenly, Mr. Rahman wants to talk to Dale in private. I can't do anything until this is paid. A debit card. Try. I don't know if you want to make some calls, see if anyone can help you pay this amount. But I don't, like I said, The truth about Mr. Rahman's situation finally emerges. We've been struggling last few months. And that's what he was doing. That boy was fighting for his well-being. Or this could be all part of a sob story. Okay, the aggressive side didn't work. The negativity didn't work. So they called the police. I'm in the wrong. Okay, now what can I do? Let's just try this sob story. Let me try to see if this works. That's what it is, just a sob story. There is no one. I can show you the bank account if you don't trust. The agents have been at the factory yeah. for four and a half hours. There's nothing we have to remove you. We have to. We have no money, so we have to. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. Just wait another few moments. We are just still. I just made a couple of calls. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Finally, Mr. Rahman is starting to raise some money. You got what, sir? So you're at how much? 800 now? <laughs> he offers the agents 885 pounds, nearly half of the money owed. At this point, I will want all. Card? How much on this one? 385. Seven. But it's not him, it's his employees who are having to stump up the cash. And the other one, 500 and the other one. All of this is unnecessary. And could have been the employees will end up suing them too. But in my experience, the lesser amounts that we have to collect cause the most aggravation. They would lose more money by not working a day, the company is, than if you paid this, go to court and put your case in front of the judge. Facts. If I give up $500 for the place I work to keep you open, at that point, I own a percentage of it. Period. <laughs> The agents decide to give Mr. Rahman 48 hours to raise the rest of the money he owes. So you need to call. That's what needs to be paid. Two days. Mohammed, I'm going. See you later. What a peaceful... Five hours after they first arrived, it's the case outside. is resolved for now. But if Mr. Rahman doesn't pay the £1,100 still owed within two days, the It'll agents be back. will be back. <laughs> to take it away. That was a good negative opener. That's the type of negative energy that we need every opener. There are nearly 5 million self-employed people in the UK. However, they earn on average 40% less than company employees. Research has shown that the self-employed had an average debt of nearly 20 times their income. Self-employed people uh, advised by a leading debt charity owed an average of 300 k That's why I don't be putting nothing on credit cards. I don't be getting no loans or anything like that. Because you never know what type of month you're going to have in this industry that I'm in here. So I'll just be chilling. Whatever I get is what I get. Enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Freckleton, North Lancashire. To Freckleton? Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Freckleton? <laughs> this sounds like a story tale. Oh, my God. Collect a debt of just over 785. Wait, no, no, no. Replay it. Enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Freckleton, North Lancashire.
to collect a debt of just over this. 785 pounds owed by a barber's shop in unpaid rent. I think it's going to be a dead giveaway when we walk in. Is crazy. In fact, we don't need a haircut today. If the owner, Lindsay DeSanti, can't or won't pay, the agents can seize goods to cover the debt today. You think it's the one called the Village Barbers? <laughs> it is, Fictional it is here. <laughs> Oh, someone's in, having a cut, they're gonna get interrupted. It's a nice little village though. Imagine though, you mid-cut, half of your taper is done, half of your fade is done, and somebody come in and talk about, all right, we gotta unplug these, we gotta take them away. Whoa, 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 finish my cut, then take it away, buddy. Hello there, are you okay? Yeah. Um, we've been sent in by the landlords. Yeah, in regards to outstanding rent. Oh, no, no. I'm this. Well, that is what it is, I'm afraid. Where from? Show me the proof of outstanding rent. Well, the landlord's instructed us to cut that amount. Well, get him, get him. Get that nubbin on the phone. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take I control of the goods. I want the proof of this outstanding rent, then. Well, have you paid it? Is she really having a conversation with them through the mirror when she could just turn around and talk to them? Does he see what I'm talking about? Like, this is not real. This is a simulation right here. This is not real. It's not real. Ma'am, turn around. Why? And they're looking back in the mirror to see her. <laughs> oh my God. What is going on? What my friend? Yes, it's paid every single week. She cursing that mirror out. That's tough. Lindsay insists she's fully up to date with her rent payments, but the documents say otherwise. So we're here now to collect a balance. Well, you know say otherwise. Standard haircut, seven dollars over sixty-five. Dang, there's a old people. Um, what's the what's it called when the old people elderly get a discount? Senior citizen discount. Under eleven, under under eleven is under eleven. Six dollars. Dad and lad offer eleven dollars. So if you come, I ain't never got a haircut that was six, seven, eleven, or five dollars. I ain't never paid that little. So we're here now to collect a balance. Well, you're not giving me any note. For what? You're not giving me any notice. Oh, after I've been sent here. No, it hasn't. Yeah, it done, yeah. No, it hasn't. Yeah, it has done, or else we wouldn't be here. I can understand it's a little bit stressful, OK? I completely understand. I do. But you can see it from our point of view. You've been instructed by the landlord to collect an outstanding balance. Are you going to make payment? We'll be on our way, you see. I'm not, I'm not dealing with you, right? No. I want to know where the proof is that I've not paid that. Lindsay calls her dad for help. Gee, if I was the client, I would never come back. <laughs> Barbers already get a bad rep for doing all a bunch of stuff when they cutting your hair and not focusing on your hair. Just imagine this. Dad, I need you in my shop ASAP. I've got a bailiff saying I'm not paying my rent. I need you here ASAP. I've got customers in. You got a customer, ma'am, don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's me up. I need the proof, we Hello. need the proof, Dad. Lindsay, Dad, now what's the problem? Um, we've been sent in by the landlord with regards to outstanding rent. He's not rent. the landlord. He's not the landlord. Right, well, who is he then? He's an agent. He's not the landlord. So he's been sent in by himself. So for some reason, the, the rent hasn't been paid or there's been a miscommunication somewhere. We're here to collect some out. Yeah, okay, no problem at all, sir. We'll see you shortly. I hope you're walking in here to pay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. You might want to charge your phone. It's on 1%. The thing was... That would have pissed me off. Don't don't come in here telling me my phone is on 1%. But thank you. <laughs> Smaller communities is... It's the embarrassment factor. When you walk into a little business and you've got two high court enforcement agents there, you know within five minutes the whole village is going to know about it. Oh, God, they are. So have you got proof that you paid for the last three months? No, no, no. You pay weekly? Yes. What's your rent a week? A hundred. a week? Yeah. Lindsay still insists that she is up to date with her rent. So she missed two months. Stuart needs to get to the heart of the matter. Hi, Andy. It's Stu, mate. You're right. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's just like, she's, she said, look, I'm paying it every week. You've not got any proof to say that I haven't paid it. How long have you been here then? 
How long have I been here? Yeah, in this shop. Five years. Oh, okay. So you're saying I've missed 11 weeks? Six. 600 pounds plus fees. Fees? Yeah. To collect this money. You, you can pay free? free. Stuart comes back with news from the office. Right, we've had a statement sent through. One, two, three, four, five, it's six weeks that hasn't been paid. That's why it's 600 quid. But then, obviously, there's costs on top of that, sadly. You must know, if you haven't been paying your rent, that this was going to happen. She knows I do feel sometimes sorry for defendants, you know, especially if it's their livelihood and their business, and, and you can see they've been working hard at she it. She put on a whole show for this. But on the other side of the coin, if you're not paying your rent, you don't leave the, the, the landlord stroke claimant any choice in this matter, so we will come knocking on your door. The agents have been in the shop for a quarter of an hour. So far, Lindsay hasn't... A quarter of an hour? 15 minutes? The agents have been in the shop for a quarter of an hour. That's a great way to make it sound like they've been in there for ages. Bro, they've been in there 15 minutes. Like, relax. You ain't even had to mention that. <laughs> ...made any offer of payment. The agents decide to turn up the pressure. Does everything in the shop belongs to you? Leather couches, everything. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely miss batteries. Well, if I don't get payment, I... Is there anything in the back here, bit? No, not really. She's not removing anything! Well, I must have got in my arse! Right. It's well, fine. We don't have to remove anything as long as our full balance being paid. Lindsay's father arrives. With the 700 hours. Hello there. Right. Mr. Jackson. That's me? Yes. Right. So... What, what was the six weeks of rent that hasn't been paid and the one from last week which has obviously been no, up to date now. Just, okay. She know what she did, man. She knows she she ain't paid that rent. Right. So that's the total amount. So total amount is eleven hundred and four pounds in total. Because of additional fees, the amount of money Lindsay now owes has increased by over three hundred pounds. The, the trouble is, going back a lot of years, mm. there's history between the landlord's agent and Lindsay is a vindictive gen no, he's a vindictive well he is as well, but he's a vindictive gentleman. And he's, he's been looking minutes. he's been looking for something like this to hit Lindsay since they took over. Lindsay used to rent a flat from him. She had two little children at the time. The idiots of the village started lighting fires at the bottom of the stairs. So Lindsay moved out. She couldn't get three months notice with people lighting fires at the bottom. He took Lindsay to court, and he won. So it cost us a fortune then? Yeah. She this is an ideal opportunity for him to... Well, I mean, <laughs> I understand the situation. You had to move out in a, a hurry, three months. You still got to give three months. It's contractual. It's in the, it's in the lease. If you leave, you three months notice. Just put another nail, try and put another nail in her coffin. Oh, yeah. Despite the long-running dispute with her landlord's agent, the debt must be settled today, one way or another. I'm happy about I'm paying it all. I've been paying it all, no! Oh, I'm just calm down, Lindsay. Now... She over there talking about some money. How are you paying it all and not running over there to stop him or grab that card, though? Come on, now. We all know that that's a gimmick, ma'am. You want him to pay that. Well, how do you want me to pay you? It needs to be the cash. We'll give it. Oh. Or debit card. I can get to the building society. Yeah. But it can take me three quarters of an hour. What time is it now? If you want to, if you want to make an appointment and come back later, that's fine by me. We'll, we won't be leaving here until the money's collected. Right, so, that's fine. So we can wait until about quarter past ten. Right. That's I'm on problem. my way now. Yeah. Okay. No please wait. Lindsay, we will have a meeting with the, the owners, and we'll sort it out. I'm not going to meet with Sam. I'm not going to meet with that. No. Right. Okay. Uh, look. Well, You'll sort it out, yeah, 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 no problem. Lindsay, just sit down, calm down, leave your call sign on for now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Lindsay, really crying, got boogers and everything. Yeah, just close up, lock on up. The agents have given Lindsay's father a 45 minute deadline to get the money. All they can do now is wait. Try to get a free cut. I suppose people talk and things like that, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, I live in a village myself and it's can't be anything. Yeah. <laughs> what is that wearing her butt? <laughs> she farting, talking about butt. Oh, like. 
how's business been See going you. anyway? Has it, has it been all right? She not trying to talk. She obviously is struggling at the moment. It's clear from that, by the way she's acting. If there is bad blood between Latin's agent, don't give them any excuses. Shortly before the deadline, Lindsay's dad returns. Of course, that man's on time. He's eleven hundred and four pounds, sir, and we'll do you a receipt for the cash. He pays the debt off in full. So, so, right, there's your receipt, sir. All right, that would have made me sick. The agents have got the result they needed, but for Lindsay and her father, the dispute. W dad mm. is far from over. There's two sides to every story. Lindsay's at fault by missing a, a rent payment, but the, the thing is, why have they not communicated with me? I am joint tenant with Lindsay oh. on this property. His shop is literally a half a mile down the road. In the village, yes. And the, 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 the village. He drives yeah. past every day. Surely, if there was a problem. Call in, don't you? Not a phone call. Surely, if it was a problem, I'd take you to court. <laughs> That's what it is. I did what I needed to do. Nothing at all. She was hey. obviously very shocked. Hey, y'all can go collect this money for me. Uh, add y'all little fees on it. It's something like, go ahead, grab it. When we first walked in. Why would I deal with y'all? Why would I deal with excuses after excuses after argument after argument when I can go to them? Saying that she always pays, oh, it's always up to date. And then when we showed her the yeah, statement, daughter for sure. she kind of changed her tune a little bit. So she knew she was pulling the wool over our eyes. Trying to. Or trying to even, yeah. But at the end of the day, father comes to the rescue. As normal as usual. Stuart and Vic have got a result in a difficult situation. But in Brian and Dell's next case, Dale is everywhere. Look, great. Yeah, you're not gonna get us. According to a government report, bereaved families in the UK are finding it harder to pay for a funeral for their loved ones. Oh, my God. 45% of Britons have made no provision for their funeral after they pass away. It's very important to have life insurance. If you don't got life insurance, grab you some life insurance. If you're an American watching this and you don't have any life insurance, my girl, she sells life insurance. Let me know. I got you. We'll take care of you. Well, I won't. She will. With typical costs ranging from three thousand to seven thousand pounds. Look, I am a W. Look at me. Hey, that's W man's right. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in Bedfordshire, chasing a debt of nearly two thousand pounds owed to a. Th well, life insurance isn't necessary with free health insurance. Yes, it is. What do, what do that mean? It's the, they don't bury you. They don't pay all the debt you leave behind. You know what I'm saying? Just imagine you got life insurance. Life insurance will stop generational poorness. It'll stop it'll stop that. If I have a million dollar life insurance plan, when I pass away, my daughter gets a million dollars. One million. And imagine if I put it in a growing like growing interest type account. Like I can get deep into this, but <laughs> no. Don't be fooled by that. They will help you not die, but once you pass away, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be handled. Funeral director. Matter of fact, they're about to tell you right now. Nearly two thousand. High court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy oh. Anglin are in Bedfordshire, chasing a debt of nearly two thousand pounds owed to a funeral director. Now, what we got next, mate? We're going to see Miss Karen. And yeah. that's the whole thing, man. A lot of people are just misinformed about what life insurance does for you. But, you know, one day maybe I'll have her come on here and break it down for people. Born she can't do anything for anybody that's in the UK, though. Like, you would have to find a licensed agent in there. And, uh, you know, they can work with you. I, in Milton Keynes, 
she has one thousand. Like for example, I had life insurance at my old job, right? When I was in a hotel, I had a four hundred one k and I had life insurance. I had a, like a like a five hundred thousand dollar plan. I can withdraw from that. I have to pay it back, but I can withdraw from that. If I'm going through hard times, I can go and be like, yo, I need to withdraw from my life insurance. Take 10 bands from there. Do what I need to do. Invest it in myself. However much I got to take. And there's a penalty associated with it, but it is what it is. At least in America. It's more like a loan. Again, yeah, yeah. It's no, it's, it's it's how how does advance work? I never had an advance, but I know it's more like a loan. You got to pay it back. Seven hundred and fifty-one thousand fifty-three pounds. The debtor Karen Hillborn game no. originally owed just over. Eight. You don't have to die to get your money first, but like the lump sum, yes, you can. Like I said, you can withdraw it, you can invest it, you can do whatever you want with it, but as long as you got to keep paying it. If you don't pay it, they're gonna come take you. <laughs> Can't pay it, we'll take it away. They're gonna get you. Pounds after failing to pay the full cost of her mother's funeral, but legal and high court fees have now more than doubled that amount. The sensitive nature of the debt means the agents will need to handle this case with care. Hello, how are you? Um, my name's Brian, I'm from the High Court. I'm from Karen Hillborn Game. Uh, please? Is she here? Yeah, she's Okay, can I speak to her, please? Hello. Hi. How are you? I've got a High Court writ made against you for money's outstanding. Oh, you mean the, the, for her mother's funeral? <laughs> well, we've actually contacted them several times. Right. Office and okay. He's refused it every time. I've got an appointment. Well, you need, to deal, you need to deal with this. High Court can't wait for your appointment. I'm, I'm quite disabled at the moment. Okay, what's your, dis no, what's your disability? I'm going for treatment to help me with my She has fibromyalgia. So how can we get it resolved? Um, I've been trying to resolve it because okay. I deal with her finances. Okay. She's my wife. Okay. I'm her carer. Her mother died after we cared for her. Sorry to hear that. Through terminal cancer. Okay. <laughs> we paid all of her funeral up front because okay. she was dying of cancer. We knew that. See what I'm saying? They paid out of pocket all of their funeral up front. Now, now, R.I.P. to mom, but I'm pretty sure if they would have got life insurance way, way before any of this occurred, that's where the that's where funeral costs are taken care of. Any debt left behind is taken care of. Whoever you write the policy to pay out to, they'll get that money. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He then charges an extra four hundred and fifty pounds to view her dead body right. in the morgue. I appreciate the circumstances. Normal stuff, yeah, it's right? It's clearly difficult. Yeah, and we understand that. The problem we've got, we have to work upon the high court writ. I told him we are more than happy to pay okay. him twenty pounds a month. He didn't want that. He doesn't have to. Doesn't have to accept that. No, I know he doesn't, but I can't afford to give him okay. any more. Well, I don't care. Okay. She's okay. disabled. Unfortunately, we can't work. Okay, I understand she's disabled. Right. So why I understand are you that. Here? Well, that's my job. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm sorry for laughing, but that was crazy. That was a crazy amount of entitlement. Why are you here? The world don't stop at your problems. Like, and that's that's what hundreds like. A lot of us got issues going on, and we think the world's supposed to stop just because we got issues going on. No, the world keeps spinning. Everybody got issues. Everybody got to get paid. Everybody got to make money. Everybody got to go day to day. Everybody got to deal with the ailments. Everybody got to deal with death. You know what I'm saying? For you to think that the world is supposed to stop is crazy to me. That, that is not wild to y'all. Like, that's wild. I'm here. Maybe it's because I'm grown as hell nowadays. Like, you need to, you need, well, money. Needs to be paid. We don't have any okay. money. We don't get a lot of high court rates where the debts are regarding the funeral. It can make your, your job difficult because that grieving process can go on for some considerable length of time. It's emotionally charged before you get there. You need to deal with the debt. They need to face up to the fact they need to deal with the debt. And that can take some time in getting their head around to it. Dell and Brian like, bro, now have right. to work with the couple to get the matter resolved. Do you appreciate how distressing look, this is look, for us? Look, this, this situation wasn't incurred by us, okay? Now, at the end of the day, the gentleman who you have your dispute with has a business to run, okay? 
right? So therefore, so ma'am, and and here average funeral is six thousand. Really, depending on you, Chicago average funeral is ten bands. And that, like, just saying that, like, I understand your distress, R.I.P. your um loved ones, but that's just how the world works. No, it shouldn't. But it also costs twenty thousand to birth a human too. So you know what I'm saying? At least it's half off. Respectfully. All right. Now he has a business to run, just like anyone else trying to earn a living. Now I'm not. I don't know what the dispute is, but I've heard your side. There are two sides to everything. You heard our uh, side. Karen, I want to get this sorted so you can get your children. I'm not going now. Okay. We'll pay him what we can. Yeah, Which is what? It's already that. been agreed. That's not how it works. Five pounds no, a month. No, it hasn't been agreed. Pounds. Five pound a month. Where's my calculator at? How much? Do you, they owe what? 700? 400? They owe 700. Now, now that they're five pounds. Where's the calculator? Calculator. How many times? 700 divided by $5. 700 divided by 5 equals. That's 140 months. Divided by 12. 11 years. Is, did I do that math right? Yeah, I did it right. 11 years to pay back $7. I mean, $700. Are you crazy, ma'am? Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. He hasn't agreed that at all. Because my mother died of cancer. We were caring for her for two years. And it was a very devastating time, and I lost my job because I was so ill. This is okay. why you are here, and how disgusting this country is now that you harass your disabled argument, people. Your argument is not with us. I don't want to speak to you anymore. Fine, don't. You people are so disgusting. Why, why don't you get a real job? But well, we're doing our job. It's a real job. He gets paid, he gets taxed, he taxes taken out. It's a real job. Yeah, yeah. Get a proper job where you can treat We're doing our job. Than actually harassing people. Well, are we shouting at you? Debtors will use a high amount of emotion. <laughs> Brian is on time right now. My bad. This ain't even a funny situation. I understand their anger, but like. To deflect from having to pay a debt or to. They ain't going away. That. They're in that emotional cycle. They don't want to accept it or they're not in a, in a position to, to deal with it. Unfortunately, and that's my problem. That's my problem now. I don't be taking death serious. Me personally, like, I, like I do, but like so much death has occurred around me. I'm just, eh. so that's how I be feeling to me. Like, ah, for real, dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. You don't, you don't. It's, it's a me thing, honestly. I, my bad, G. Condolences. I'm not, I'm being dead serious. Y'all think I'm... I'm being serious. Y'all think I'm playing. It doesn't change the fact that they owe the money. The bottom right. line is, you've incurred the a debt. Bullies, have bullies. Come to try and intimidate not at all. a disabled woman not at all. for money you know which she about? couldn't afford to pay then because why her did mother you... fucking died with Listen. no money and I had to pay three grand for a funeral. I haven't got three grand. You're making me ill. I'm not making Straight. you ill. Oh yeah, she's wigging. She's blaming everything on like now. She just doing anything. She's saying anything to get them out the doorstep. This triggers off my illness. Why, why, so now why I'm here? probably not gonna be able to walk for three why? days because if you okay. leave, why are we here? You don't understand. Don't fucking research fibromyalgia. No, I don't. And you'll find out that actually stress causes such trauma. Brian and Dell now have a dilemma. They're duty bound to execute the writ, but with no offer of payment looking likely. They must start to look for assets they can seize, despite the sensitivity of the situation. Just made some call. This would be a tough job, man. She said there's a private vehicle around the back here. A black and white vehicle. I don't even think she's a Karen. I just think she, like... I don't know. Her emotional outlets are crazy. She doesn't... She's, like, not emotionally strong. Which a lot of us aren't. Like I, I, I'm still not that emotionally strong. Like, not being emotionally strong means like getting into fights where you shouldn't really get into fights and you should walk away. Like stuff like it's the same thing as what's going on here. Like, 
Like we you. all need, so a lot of us need to get our emotions in check, man. All right, so there. The agents have found Karen's car. Mm -hmm. Brian calls for a vehicle check. I need to do um HPR check on a vehicle. If the car is free of 700, though? finance, its value would more than cover the nearly £2,000 debt. Oh, it's two bands. But as Karen is disabled, they need to check whether this is the right course of action. This is not the right car, though. Don't take that lady car. Y'all just had to just do what they do sometimes, like just walk away empty-handed at this point. We'd have to look at all the circumstances before making that type of decision, particularly if it's the only, if it's the only means we're getting to them from hospital or, or, or other medical facilities. So it's not an easy one, but their attitude has made things easy to resolve. So. Minutes later, Brian hears back about the vehicle check. Yeah, it's coming up as a mobility vehicle. Okay, uh, no, that's fine. Bye. So there's obviously a disability issue here. And she's getting carer's allowance. She's got a mobility vehicle. She has uh, vulnerability issues, in my view. Um, she didn't seem vulnerable when she's standing there screaming and shouting. But, you know, we have to take into consideration what they're telling us. What did she have With again? Central fibrosis? What was it? No offer of payment and no goods to seize. Nah, they not gonna take it. Brian, Brian is top, <laughs> Brian, Brian is top goon, top negative G. If somebody was gonna take it, he would take it. I don't think he gonna take it though. The agents have no choice but to walk away empty handed. Yeah, they just gotta walk away from this one. Now, they leave a copy of the writ for Karen. If she doesn't pay within a month, the agents will be back. It's been a stressful case for everyone concerned. There was that emotional cycle that we couldn't get through. We couldn't communicate. It was very, very hard. It's a difficult situation. We understand that. Yeah, you know. it's very difficult. But she was definitely like putting a lot of stuff on them that is not on them. But they, at the end of the day, they did. They made the right call. Just leave that girl alone. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, you know, we're stereotyped as individuals who are, you know, difficult, but we're not. I feel like there are so many disabled people in this country at the moment that... I ain't gonna lie, she is pretty. This is how you tell if a girl's pretty. When she crying, if she's still pretty, that's real beauty. <laughs> this girl, she pretty, I ain't gonna... Feel... I'm getting the support they need, and... Because a lot of people get ugly when they cry. And it's not happening for her. Top it all off, if somebody suddenly lost their job. Said doc, somebody in the comments said, Dr. Umar hates me. Listen, beauty is beauty, no matter what color you are. All everybody, all creatures have a beauty to them. All creatures of God have a beauty of them. How are they going to be able to afford to pay ridiculous amounts of money? I'm sorry, but I want to go back to court. I'm going to get a legal subpoena and I'm going to try and... She kind of look like Angelina Jolie. ...find a way to fight this, all of this. And when they see our income is in outcomings, they will know that we can't actually afford to pay more than what we suggested in the first place. Nearly 60% of UK businesses face some sort of debt. And 99% of these... You can't... Nah, bro, hold on. Are... Look, right here. She don't look like her. Now, now, hold on. Check me out real quick. Check me out. Just now, I'm not saying she looked like her verbatim. Like she looked just like her. 
But she like got tricked. Now, now look. Hold on now. Now, now look. When she was crying, it looked more like her. It looked more like her. When she cried, she looked like Angelina Jolie. They favor each other. That's what I'm saying. You can't tell me I'm wrong, man. Kate Middleton. Face yeah, some she sort did like Kate Middleton. And 99% of these are small or medium-sized enterprises. More than one in three small business owners draws less than £100 income each month, leaving them with a constant struggle to stay on top of their finances. Leaving them with a constant struggle to stay on top of their finances. Seven in ten small business owners have taken out a personal loan to keep their business afloat. Sheet. 8.30 a.m. Sleaford, Lincolnshire. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are chasing a debt of nearly £5,000 mm. owed by the owner of a computer repair business. Mm. And we're going to visit Mr. Philip Brace. Mr. Brace. This morning. And Mr. Brace needs to pay, pay us yeah. £4,747.58. The debt is for unpaid rent. Mr. Brace's landlord has escalated the case to the High Court to get his money back quickly. Five You've done that hours. before, haven't you? 18. 16. What the street is this? This is like Bourbon Street. It opens at 9 o'clock. Hey, someone's coming, mate. Hello there, sir. Are you OK? Um, we're after Mr Brace. That's me. Mr Brace, my name's Mr McCracken. This is my colleague, Mr Victor. We're High Court Enforcement Agents from Direct Collection Bailiffs Limited. We've got a High Court writ, sir, to execute to the value of 4,747. How much time? Oh, it's 10 minutes. minutes. They yeah, might get... Understand. Yeah. Are you able to make payments, sir? At the moment, no. I'm not. Right, OK, because we are instructed to remove goods, sir, unless payment can be made. What's the date about? Uh, ain't nothing in there. Well, it's uh, unpaid rent. Rent. Right. For this property? Yeah. Right. Well, but basically, I've been having problems with the um, landlord anyway in here because he was supposed to have come in and sorted out some damp and sorts of rubbish for this place. Right. He's never turned up, so I've basically sort of stopped paying the rent, you know what I mean? Way. Because there's a lot of stuff in here. That's not how it works. Some stuff. You know what I mean? That is a myth, bro. That is a myth. I wish people stopped doing that. That's a myth. Oh, just because stuff ain't working, we not paying you. That's a myth, G. You're gonna... <laughs> you, it don't work like that. Yeah. That will get damaged with all the debt. I must admit, I'm not making any money out of the place. Right. Thing is, you say make a payment, but it'd just be like, excuse my French, pissing in the ocean. You know what I mean? It's not going to make a great deal of difference. Mr. Brace has run the business for three years. He claims he's fallen on hard times. But Vic wants to dig deeper. But you did say earlier you stopped paying rent because you weren't happy with some of the things. In, so you didn't stop, but you told us you stopped rent because you can't afford to pay rent. You told us you stopped rent because there was problems right. with the building, etc., etc., etc. So yeah, that's fine. Are no. we gonna are we yeah, gonna I go around? Are we gonna go around in circles? Are we gonna be honest with each other here? Because I'm being honest. I no, stopped no, rent I'm because a, yeah, one story one, here. I couldn't afford it. And two, um, and situation and bits and pieces. So, but it's a combination of both. I'm being straight with you, I'm being honest with you, I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I can't pay. Simple as that. Then we'll take it away. Mr. Bryce has made his position clear, but the agents still need to try and settle that today, one way or another. I need to make a way to remove. It goes up to £5,611. And if the goods don't get, uh, this is worst case scenario, if the goods don't fetch, total amount outstanding, then there will be a statutory demand issue. Okay, so it is important that you try and get this resolved. A statutory demand is a written warning from a creditor. It states that if you don't pay your debt or come to another arrangement, they could start good proceedings to make you bankrupt. The pressure is on. 
Mr. Brace must now raise the funds or risk losing his entire livelihood. Yeah, man, you get if you get um, bankrupt, you can't have a business in your name. I learned that recently. That's tough. That is tough. High Court Enforcement Computer Repair it. Shop business was failing. We don't need a recap. I'm sorry. Now the agent's only option is to seize goods to try and cover the debt. We are instructed to remove goods so unless payment can be made. I can point out the bits that belong to customers and that belong to my son-in-law. Hmm. We need to see proof of that, sir. Well, unfortunately... Well, if you can't show us proof today, everything will get removed and stored for seven days. If you can't produce proof of after seven days, it will get sold at public auction. That's that lot up there, well, is mine. Yeah. A lot of these need repairing. There's plenty of IT equipment in the shop, but there's a problem. The value of the broken stock doesn't come close to covering the five thousand pound debt. Yeah. You should get at least at least fifty quid for each. No. I can tell you that now. No, you won't. I can tell you that now. No, I'm not an auctioneer. Because he was gonna buy that at auction, does not know if that is working or not, so they pay scrap value, which is a fiver. When you walk into a business and you can see they are struggling to trade or to make a, a living, clearly that makes it more difficult for us to um, collect on that specific case because there's nothing of value to remove. With nothing of value worth seizing in the shop, Stuart changes tactics. Got the writ is in Mr. Brace's name, so his personal goods are also liable. We'd have to go to your home address as well and take control from the uh, goods there uh, as well. So uh, it's in your name personally. What would be the minimum amount that I would have to pay Full balance. There's no doubt you'll probably say it's the whole lot. <laughs> well, we instructed to collect the balance, which is the whole lot, obviously. That, that's fair enough, I understand that. 2,200 would be the minimum. Still I, I can't physically pull two grand out of my back pocket <clears throat> to hand it over to you. Yeah. I've got a vehicle at home. This happens yeah. to a lot of people, man. Hey, I'm telling you, when I, man, hey, listen, I've been evicted before, and I had a co-signer, and shout out to her, man, because she, she, a, she a real one, bro. Like, I was down bad at one point. I'm talking about the debt collectors came like this. Like, they didn't come like this. I had a writ of possession, had to leave, blah, blah, blah. But she kept getting emails, and she was like, you know what? Boom, she just gave them the money, the back pay. She gave them, had had that type of money on her i was like man that's tough <laughs> i was like dang i need to i need to get my life together that's that's crazy but of course i of course i you know paid her back but at the same time like at that moment in time for y'all want to know how much ten, she had 10 bands i owed them people 10 bands she whoop slide the card 10 bands i'm What am I doing in life? What the hell? Nah, on God, like I, whatever she need, I'll take a bullet for her if she need me to. Cause that, hey, that's one hundred on her. That's tough. Yes, it's under my name. You can have that as well. Watch the vehicle, sir. I was like, why did you do that? I was gonna pay it in payments and whatever. You know what I'm saying? She was like, no, I just, I had it, so I just paid it. I was like. Hi John, can I give you HPI mate? I'll be honest with you, can't be able to snap. No problem, cheers John, see you later, bye bye. The office tells Stuart the broken down Skoda is virtually worthless. Damn. The agents try once more to get Mr Brace to come up with an offer of payment. Is there anyone who can, who can help you raise funds? Make a I've, payment? I've been trying. I've been trying. At the end of the day, I'll just have to close my business down. It's as simple as that. Which we don't really I'm want to not. do. Look, I could take you down to my bank and I can get you a balance of my account. And if there's 100 quid in there, I'll be surprised. 
that's how bad the business how is. How are you I've, living? I've been living on oh, borrowed okay. time. The agents have run out of options. So Stuart throws Mr. Brace a lifeline. 48 hours. What we'll do is so I'll give you 24 hours to see what you can do. To be honest with you, there's no way I can raise it. And like I said, if at all, like I said, we take control of goods from the property and here, uh, it doesn't clear the balance, then they'll be stuck. See what I'm saying? Look, Stuart, you got to read between the lines right now. Stuart is giving him a chance. Hey, get this stuff up out of here. If it's not yours, get it out of here. So, because we coming back and we make an inventory on everything. You got 24 hours to get the stuff that's not yours out of here. Simple. You know what I'm saying? Hey, good man, Stuart. He be doing real, real, real... Man, I can't even say that word on here. He be doing real, real activities. Stuart is a real one. You know what I'm saying? He ain't have to do that. Hey, get this, get it out of here. We're going to come back 24 hours. If it's not yours, you, it should be gone. He's saying it without saying it. That's your demand issue, which was more or less at here. Uh, it doesn't clear the balance. Then there'll be a statute of demand issue, which was more or less at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. Bankruptcy is such a crippling situation for any individual. Your bank accounts are frozen, your credit cards are yeah, stopped. Hopefully. You'll lose any valuable asset. It's made publicly aware that you are now bankrupt. Your whole life comes to a stop. Even if I went and stood on the street corners. Yeah. And, and deal. On the backside, I, I couldn't get too great. <laughs> Sir, why was that? The worst? It's a little bit extreme, ain't it? No. <laughs> I think most people would say, bloody, I'll be a good night for us. I'd have to pay them rather than pay me. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye. Bye. Right. <clears throat> I started three years ago, and everything seemed to be all right. Then two more shops have opened up in town, which, yeah, it has affected my business. And unfortunately, the economy has screwed me over. I've got into debt. It's my problem. It's not them. So at the end of the day, I've got to either go and pay to become bankrupt, and just shut my business down and go and get a proper job. Mr. Brace has 24 hours to come up with more than... Nah, low-key, it'd be the economy sometimes, for real. Somebody in chat said, don't blame the economy. No, 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 no. <laughs> sometimes we can blame the economy. £2,000. If he doesn't pay, <laughs> the agents will... Not all the time, but... I think he's given up. He's given up on himself. He's just plodding along day to day, isn't he? He said he is waiting for us, and I think he genuinely was. All right. Creative printer owner Muhammad Rahman appealed the debt. The court set it aside and returned. The, oh, he did all of that, did one. But the claimant went back to the court and won the case. The debt was paid. Karen Hillwood again appealed the judgment after the agent's visit. The appeal was rejected by the courts. Of course it was, unfortunately. But we knew that was coming. The agents returned, but with no assets of any value to seize from the house, the case was closed. She still won. A W is a W. Philip Brace did not make a payment within 24 hours of the agent's visit. Three weeks later, the debt was paid in full by his son and daughter. W kids, man. W kids, that man took care of you for 18 plus years each. That's the least y'all could do. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. That was an hour and four minutes for a 44 minute show. We was really chatting. That's tough.